dear students we are back with our interaction on the geometric design we have started with the cross sectional elements in our previous interaction and before that we have completed the module 1 in the previous interaction we have discussed about the various cross sectional profiles to understand what type of elements needs to be provided on any of the cross section related to different type of roads and in that category we talked about expressways we have looked at the urban roads where arterial sub arterial collector and local streets are there then we have looked at the rural highways and there specifically we talked about the two lane highways under the various conditions and then finally multi lane highways now when we talk about the multi lane highways we are looking at the various factors which control the width of a cross section we have seen that there are different widths of a cross section in terms of the total row so that is what we are going to talk here then once we have done with this after this we are going to start with the elements of the cross section and the two elements which we can take up are carriageway widths and the shoulders and while discussing the width of the shoulder we will also look at that what is the thickness which usually being provided on a shoulder. So, once we have got all of this idea then probably you also have got a idea about what are the various factors which control the amount of space which is required to be taken for the construction of one type of a facility that is whether you are talking about an expressway or you are talking about at a lower level the local street in urban area or you are talking about a village road in the case of a rural highways or any other such typical condition. So, let us look at that what is the classification of those factors which control all of this. So, when you talk about this the very first thing which is there is a functional requirement. Now, when we look at the functional requirement the road category is one aspect we are going to look at say if we talk about the this photograph where the network has been shown here what you can see is in the red color we have a golden quadrilateral. So, this is the golden quadrilateral which is being shown when we are talking about a blue lined connectivity then this is north south corridor when you are looking at a say a light blue colored lines which are there then these are for east west corridor and then there are different other roads which have been shown and which have been developed by NHDP that is national highway development project. So, when you are looking at all of these things and when you are talking about even other corridors or the national highways what is going to happen is that the type of road which we are constructing they are being provided to take up lot of traffic from one direction to another say Shirinagar to Kanyakumari or Porbandar to Silchar or connecting Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata with each other or other parts of the country. So, the widths are going to be there and that is based on the requirements in terms of the connectivities and the type of movement which is going to be there. So, that we can look at in the other case. Another thing is a mobility requirement and when we talk about mobility requirement that means we are talking about speeds and if the vehicles are moving at different speeds then we can create sections of that particular road in terms of we can say that the high speed vehicles are on this side, the slow speed vehicles may be moving on this side and the medium speed vehicles they are moving in the center. If that sort of a classification we are doing then probably we have to go for a three lane system, but then when we are looking at this three lane system this is also going to be depend on the traffic volume. What is the amount of traffic what are the number of vehicles which are going to be there for which this facility is to be constructed. Now, when we talk about a lane the lane has a capacity and with respect to that if we look at the traffic volume that that is going to define that how many lanes needs to be provided. Now, when we are looking at this traffic volume the other two components which we are required to look at is the nature of traffic as well as the composition of traffic. If you see this photograph in this photograph there are different users are which you can see or they are visible here. You can see there are pedestrians, they are motorcyclists or the scooter people there are buses, there are cars and there are lot of activity on this side or on the other side of this particular road. So, that means when we are looking at this composition 
we need to see what amount of traffic is there with respect to a category and do we need to provide the facility for that particular traffic or, or a vehicle category or not. So, this is another thing which we have to take into consideration that is where the operational requirements are going to be there. Sometimes the specific requirements can be there. Say you have to provide a space for the parking of vehicles because there are certain developmental activities which are being provided on the side of a road and people will be coming to that area so as to utilize that activity. So, if that is the case say if you see in this photograph here there is a space being provided for pedestrians and at the same time there is a space also being dedicated for parking of vehicles where the cars have been parked parallel to the footpath or parallel to the road. So, this space is being dedicated. It means if you are taking this space, it comes out to be something like 2.5 meters or 3 meters. So, this 2.5 meters or 3 meters is adding to the overall space which otherwise is required for the movement of traffic. There may be a possibility of loading and unloading. This loading and unloading can be in terms of freight, it can be in terms of uh, passengers. So, we may talk about passengers, we may talk about the goods being transported. Say if we take the example in this particular photograph in the center, what you can see is that there are lanes being provided, three lane system is there on this side and three lane system is there on the other side. But there is a bus bay being provided, you can see that it is going in this form. So, the bus can come and stop at this location and so as to provide that facility and so that the traffic which is moving straight should not get interrupted, we have flared the section and increase the width at this particular location. So, that means if we are requiring to have this facility more width is required at this location. So, here this becomes specific to passengers, but this may be a possibility that you have such type of things on the side where the goods traffic is going to be there and loading and unloading of the goods can take place. We may also be requiring to have an exclusive facilities. Now, exclusive facilities like a facility as a footpath. This is an exclusive facility for the pedestrians. There be an exclusive facility here being provided in terms of the service road because there is a development and the traffic which is there can move on this particular road and can enter or exit at some location with respect to the main highway. So, that is an additional thing being provided. This exclusive facility can be for bicycle also or non motorized traffic. In some of the cases like you are talking about a canal or you are talking about the road which needs to be constructed on an embankment. So, high banks, deep cuts all of those areas or where the land is unstable or the land is prone to the landslides or the rock falls or the soil flow etcetera there also we need to have an extra land to be acquired in the very starting. So, to take care of all of these conditions so that the road keeps working in its functional form or the traffic keeps moving. So, this is how we are going to provide the facilities even you can see that there is a space which is required to place certain informatory signs for the drivers who are moving on this road. So, that space is also need to be taken care of. So, when we talk about these specific along with this because we are providing the facilities for a type of users, we need to look at the comfort convenience of those users also. When we are looking at this facility which is working in either this direction or is in this direction that is it is going to provide a connectivity between spaces. It may also happen that there are property on the side, so we need to provide a connectivity to the side property. So, that access to property is also need to be looked at and this means also take some space in the transverse direction and we have to see that how this can be controlled. Service requirements is another thing. The spaces are to be provided for say the illuminations as being shown here this here it is being provided on the side path, here it is provided on a median that is the difference between the two photographs. You can see there is a guardrail. So, when the guardrail is provided, it is being set back from the carriageway edge. So, some space is going in that also or <coughs> we are going to have a more of a say the bushes etcetera being provided. 
So, the category of bushes for what particular width these are provided. So, that is also going to take. So, drains, utilities, illumination, the safety requirements in terms of signs, signals, barriers and finally, the extra land which is to be acquired if we have to go for an upgradation in future. All of these things are the points which needs to be taken care of. Now, when we are looking at this extra land, there are very specific cases where this extra land has to be taken into consideration as I said previously also in the case of high banks or deep cuts, we should have extra land. When we are talking about unstable or landslide prone areas, then also in snow affected areas because when the snow is there and it is being removed from the surface, then it is accumulated on the sides as you can see in this photograph. So, we have to take care of all of these conditions, then only this path is going to be workable or become functional for the movement of the traffic or vehicles on this. You can see here there is a lot of movement of the debris from the high reaches. So, the width has to be taken care of in that sense. There may be a requirement of providing the additional features in terms of our retaining walls. So, that is also going to take some space. So, there is a retaining wall on this side, there are retaining walls on the other side also because it is a vertical cliff. So, we have to take into consideration all of these things. Important road sections, see if you talk about uh, this particular photograph, this is an intersection and it can be a one big intersection where lot of roads are coming, meeting and diverging and there is a lot of traffic also. There can be the movements of the pedestrians too. So, we need to provide the facilities for the pedestrians, we need to provide the facilities for the vehicles, we need to provide the medians in the center. So, lot of things are there for which the spaces needs to be dedicated. And finally, we have to look at the traffic in the future, 5 years from now, 10 years from now. And because of that traffic which is going to be there in 5 years or 10 years, there is a requirement of an upgradation of a facility, then the land should be acquired today itself. Because in future, once you have constructed a facility, you will find a lot of development taking place on the side of the road and the land will be taken by other people and in future if you require to have land, you have to go into the litigations etcetera. So, let us revisit this cross section before we get into the discussion on the various elements. So, we have the elements like carriageways, we have the elements like median, we have the elements like shoulders, footpaths, crash barriers, we also have the service roads, we have the drains, we have the spaces for the utilities, we may have the guardrails or the fences. So, all of these things are the part of the cross section. So, that is what is being listed in this particular slide. What you can see is from the top to bottom, we have different elements. We have carriageway, shoulders, medians, camber, verges, parking lanes, side slopes, side drains, guardrails and specific facilities for like bicycles and pedestrians. Now, this is a photograph being shown and it is a typical photograph where what you can see is the road is coming and it is closing here. So, the vehicle comes and goes back. This is actually a cul-de-sac condition. Okay, so, that is what we have talked uh, when we were looking at the cross sections and we talked about the local streets. Let us uh, start with the carriageway which is the very first and the important element. Now, carriageway is what? Carriageway is one sort of a hard system which is being provided, which provides the supports to the vehicles which are moving at the top of it. It also define the path on which the vehicles are supposed to move and it provides a smooth riding surface to the vehicles, so that the vehicle operation remains economical. If you are moving your vehicle on a rough surface, then the consumption is different than when you are moving on a smooth surface. So, it should provide a smooth riding surface, it should provide a defined path in which direction that movement is going to be there, it supports the load of the vehicles and it provides the feeling of comfort to the passengers and drivers while they are traveling on this particular hard surface. So, that is what is a carriageway. And this carriageway can be provided in two forms. It can be a black top surface or a white top surface. That means, it is bituminous in nature or it is made of cement concrete. 
So, that is what is a black top surface and white top surface. Now, what should be the width of the carriageway? The width of the carriageway is going to be dependent on how many lanes needs to be provided and how we are going to decide the number of lanes is on the basis of the traffic volume for which the carriageway is being designed. So, if the traffic volume which we are talking say it is 2000 vehicles per hour and if we look at a lane which can handle 1000 vehicles per hour one particular lane that means, so as to handle this we need two lanes and this is what we are talking for the existing condition. Now, this is to be converted into a future condition for say a design period and this design period can be 5 years, 10 years, 15 years and so. So, how much traffic is going to be there on the basis of growth rate and then considering the lane capacity we will again be able to find out what are the total number of lanes which will be required in future and based on that considering today's condition and future condition we should acquire the land. Now, let us look at the different widths which can be there. When we talk about the rural roads related to the villages, these can be 3 meters wide if the traffic is quite low, but if it is becoming substantial then we can go for a 3.5 meters wide width of a rural road. In the case of rural highways, the single lane carriageways they should be 3.75 meters wide and that may culminate here also depending on the amount of traffic and the category of road which was a rural road may get upgraded to a other category of road. So, that is another possibility. The village roads here can also be 3 meters wide. If you are talking about a multi lane system, then in the case of multi lane system we talk 3.5 meters per lane. That means, if you are talking about a 4 lane system, so, 3.5 multiplied by 4 is the width of the carriageway which is going to be provided. If you are looking at the expressway, then in the case of expressway the width of a lane is 3.75 meters and here one rider is there that at least two lanes should be there in one direction. That means, this is going to be a four lane divided system at least this is a minimum thing which has to be there. In the case of urban roads, how the things are going to be there? So, for a single lane with a raised curve 3.5 meters, if it is a two lane with a raised curve then 7 meters, four lane with a raised curve 15, 14 meters. So, what you found is they are getting multiplied with 3.5 meters depending on the number of lanes and then you have six lane, eight lane systems, all of these things are there. If you have an access road to a residential area, minimum 3 meters width has to be there. When the road is without curb, then the minimum 5.5 meter is usually provided. This can be taken into consideration as a local road system also. Here what you can see is there is a median, there is a one lane here, there is another lane here and then you have a, the third lane being provided. This can be a parking lane, this can be an extra lane or this can be a paved a shoulder which is uh, very near to the width of a lane. So, any such things can be there. So, this is how the complete system is going to be provided in any of the urban area. Now, let us look at the another thing which is shoulder. Now, what is the function of the shoulder? So, we have provided a carriageway like this. This is the center line and now we are having a shoulder on this side. So, this is shoulder and this is carriageway. Now, what the shoulder is doing here? As you can see it is providing the lateral support to the carriageway. So, the very first thing is whatever is the material of the carriageway is there it provides the lateral support to that. Another thing is that this shoulder along with the material which is being laid at the bottom of it allows the drainage of water which otherwise has seeped into the carriageway to the side drain and that is where the material which is being used in the construction of this carriageway remains intact and there is no issue with respect to the quality. So, that drains the moisture further away. When you have provided this shoulder, then it can also act 
as a location where the out of order vehicle can be parked. It can work as a space for the movement of pedestrians or the non motorized traffic as you can see in this photograph or there may be other conditions in which this particular shoulder can also be utilized. Now, what you can see here in these two photographs at the bottom in the case one there is no actual shoulder being provided you have the edge of the carriageway and that is ends the overall thing. Whereas, in another case what you found is after the edge there is some paved portion whatever is the width and then there is a unpaved, but prepared portion which is there. So, this is a right way of working this is not the right one which should be provided. Now, here we are talking about the shoulder width for a two lane as well as a multi lane highway and, and when we say multi lane highway we are talking about the four lane divided highway as well as a six lane divided highway. Here again we have the classification of terrain in two categories one is plain and rolling together and the one is the mountainous and the steep together in the case of a hilly terrain. The changes which have been observed here are with respect to the widths being increased. Now, if you see we have four categorizations here the first one is an open country which is means you are in a passing through an agricultural area your highway is passing through that and then at some locations the built up area is coming that is why it is termed as an isolated built up area or you are totally passing through a built up area or you are approaching to the great separated structures or you are approaching to the bridges is another uh, categorization which is being considered here. Now, when we see the width of the shoulder it can be paved or it can be earthen or unpaved shoulder. In the case of paved the values have been taken as 2.5 meters that is uh, common across all the categorizations. Whereas, in the case of uh, earthen shoulder the value is 1.5 meters, but then this value is being taken is only for the open country condition or if you are approaching a bridge. But in the case of built up area or in the case of approaches to the great separated structures obviously, there is no space for the earthen shoulder and that is why the values have not been specified here. And on the basis of that the overall values which we get is changing from 2.5 meters to 4 meters respectively. But when we talk about a mountainous and steep terrain for these classifications of highways that is two lane or four lanes divided or a six lane divided highways. Here the first categorization is open country with the isolated built up area that means it remains the same as such. But the three classifications which we have seen in the previous one that is built up area or the approaches to the great separated structures or approaches to the bridges they have been taken together here. And in the case of width of shoulder being talked it is being talked in terms of the hillside and the valley side. Now, what you can see is that the values are being taken as 1.5 meters. So, here this is 1.5, this is also 1.5 and this is also 1.5 meters. So, it is common across all the conditions. The only changes which are there I am talking about those now. So, 1.5 meter is being provided on the hill side and 1.5 meter is provided on the earthen side and these two are paved. But on the earthen side additionally 1 meter earthen shoulder is also being provided. In the case of built up area or other two conditions of approaches to great separated structures or bridges along with 1.5 meters paved condition a value of 0.25 meters is also being provided which is a side margin or a safety margin and that means that the total value comes out to be 1.75 meters in this case and that has to be provided on both the sides that is hill side as well as the valley side. Now, one another thing which is there is that what, what type of thickness we are going to provide. So, if the ADT is less than 8000 PCUs then the thickness which is being provided is 150 mm and the material which is used is granular in nature. But when ADT becomes more than 10000 PCU in the plain terrain then the paved shoulders 1.5 meter wides have to be provided along with the granular shoulders of 1 meter. That means, now you have a combination and instead of having 2.5 meters together it is separated as 1.5 and 1 meter. Similarly, in the case of rolling terrain though this 150 mm thick granular remains, but the value changes in terms of ADT now it reduces to 6500 and the paved shoulders again they are 1.5 meters and 1 meters, but the ADT here is being talked in terms of more than 8000 PCU. Then few points related to this four lanes in the case of mountainous and steep terrain are 
the paved shoulder shall be of the specification of the carriageway. So, whatever is the material which is being used in the carriageway, the paved shoulder should also have the same material. Earthen shoulders, they should be 150 mm thick of granular material. And in case of embankment is more than 6 meter high, then the curved channel shall be provided to control the erosion of the sloping material. So, this is an additional feature which is going to be there. So, this is how in the case of multi-lane highways, the shoulders are going to be provided specifically for four-lane system. So, we close our discussion here and we will be continuing with the shoulders and the other elements of the cross section in our next interaction. Till then, thank you and bye.